I think that my only crime is having high expectations for the South African judicial system. But watching the Senzo Mayu a trial day after day, I'm quickly learning that make sure you are never found on the other side of the law. Now, in listening to Magistrate Cronje and her cross-examination, it is very clear that very few people will stand up for you even when the wrong is happening. But I digress. After listening to Bongani and Danzi's absurd confession this case really has taken a turn for me but let's listen to how ngome zulu is still on the job for accused number one and takes on rata by the horns okay he took him on by the horns and said "Uh uh-uh allow me to talk you're not the only one who knows the law and let me do my job let me know in the comment section your thoughts on this i'll be back with the rest of my commentary I've got questions, my lord, for, for the witness. <clears throat> Mrs. Cronier, we are here dealing with the statement <clears throat> which is taken as a confession. Do you agree? Yes, correct. <clears throat> I think for the benefit of the accused persons to understand the logic and the reasons why I'll be asking this question is because I want them to follow uh, that the statement that you say it was made by accused number two was a confession. Do you understand that? I understand. I'll just make a, 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 an example from the questions that I'm asking. For instance, if in a plea in terms of section 112 2 of the criminal procedure act the accused pleads guilty to a particular offense as a presiding officer if you are not satisfied with the elements of that particular offense you are not going to accept that plea is that correct yes. we object against its line of course examination firstly um, it's irrelevant and, 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 and secondly the duty of this witness was just merely to record what what she was being told and, and, and not to make any determination my lord uh, at the end of the day as a presiding officer officer she had to determine whether what was given to her no no she no, doesn't have the no my lord may I be given an opportunity to you say she has to determine i can't allow the question she determines nothing i determine you already know it's going downhill when Judge Rata says, na, 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 na. And then he goes on to say, she determines nothing. I determine. Woo! <laughs> hey! Okay, but let's go with what Ngomezulu is leading at. She took this confession. And if you haven't watched my previous video, I highlight the points that make that confession, in my opinion, null and void. In fact... It makes the whole case a joke and how the state took that as a confession and try and are putting these people on trial because that confession makes absolute no sense. But watch the video if you haven't caught it. I'll link it again here. Let's go back to Ngome Zulu. Stand his ground. My argument, may I be given an opportunity? Okay, fine, fine, go on. I'm saying the witness is coming to assist the court to make a determination. The court cannot make a determination in the absence of anything that is placed on record. This is a presiding officer. So the presiding officer, at the end of the day, the court must make a determination whether it was an admission or a confession. That those bases, they must come from the witness who gives formal evidence. Yes, you're right. That's correct, madam. And she yes. records, she records what the witness tells her. That's correct. Not what she thinks the witness should tell her. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's it. I think I'm misquoted. You are not, because you're saying she determines. She determines nothing in terms of the law. Nothing. What, let me just make this question mm. straightforward to the witness. What is put to you when you were taking the, was it a confession? Was it a confession? The confession is an admission of guilt in its true sense. It's not for me to determine if he confessed here or not. It's for me to write down what he said, to produce it to court, and for this court to take it into account with all the other evidence to determine. 
Objection, Your Honor. Now, I don't want to be a language policeman. But remember when Msholalo stood up and objected that Baloyi was conducting his questions in Afrikaans and Judge Rata said, hey, it's okay. Let them continue speaking in Afrikaans. Baloyi would ask the questions in Afrikaans. Magistrate Konje would respond in Afrikaans. And then the interpreter would bring it right back to us in English and Zulu and so on and so on. You know, that disrupts the flow. And I imagine for um, the defense team, it's, you know, it slows down the progression of, of them understanding what's going on. That's my opinion. But wait a minute. So... Magistrate Konje can conduct herself in English because now she has forgotten, right? She's no longer talking to the states. It's no longer Kumbaya. Now she's upset at Ngomezulu's line of questioning and he, she feels he's out of order. So she does not wait for the interpreter and goes right straight to responding in English. Your thoughts in the comment section below. Should she pick one language or be allowed to flip-flop throughout all South African languages throughout the day? So that we are left wondering what is it that she really understands? And therefore, my question becomes, did she need an interpreter when Bongani uh, Tanzi was giving his confession? Yes, I agree with you. But my concern is you are here to testify under the provisions of Section 219. Because the performer that you completed, the rights that you explained to the, to the deponent related to the provisions of section 217. Sorry, 217, not 219. So this court, this court must, at the end of the day, determine whether what was taken from accused number two was an admission or a confession. The of the of the ni acne. The, the, as you say, uh, all right, the court, not me. Correct. What makes you to say accused number two made a confession before you? What makes you to say that? This deponent came and he said that he wants to make a confession. That is not for me, as a person of the and what the story is in the hall was, to to decide that what he wants to tell, out of his own free will, is a bekentenis of is net tomb erkennings of is niks nie. Uh, it was not for me then as a presiding officer and who was not in court on that particular day to then determine or decide whether this was a confession, a mere or a just a mere admission or nothing. I had not for you to shine. He did not appear before court. It was not for me to do the details to sift. It was not for me to then uh, uh, take a true, in other words, to uh, evaluate the evidence or not to evaluate that which he was saying. Ma'am. The yeah. aanduiding die aanhef van hierdie dokument beteken nie noodwendig dat dit wat op die eind van die dag gesê word neerkom op 'n bekentenis al dan nie. And uh, also now, now the attachment of this document does not then indicate or say that uh, what he then said on that day uh, comes down to a confession or not. Ma'am, the state called you to give evidence that you as the magistrate on that day, the 24th of uh, June 2020, under the provisions of Section 217-1B, if not mistaken, Roman Figure 2, you took a confession under the provision. Now you testify that the accused made a statement. What makes you to say the accused person was confessing before you? Um, a lot of already answered the and question. It won't I don't know whether you want me to repeat it. As long as I'm not satisfied with the answer, I'll keep on asking it. Because it's a technical point that I'm going to raise. You are all lawyers. Let me just rephrase it by saying, accused number two did not come to, to, to before you and say, I want to make a confession. Correct? Not in those words. Thank you. That's what I'm drawing you, drawing your attention to. You never said I'm coming to make a confession. I don't want to only always point out the bad, but good job, Judge Rata, for sitting there quietly and letting this lawyer demonstrate his skills. It's for the presiding office or that magistrate to determine that such elements of a confession does not qualify. So could please, we There's no law like that. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 There's no law like that. There's no law like that. 
217. Yeah, but you're not quoting 217. Not, can, I, can, can, uh, can we be broad minded when we <coughs> make yes. submissions? Within the law, no may I May I submit to the effect that section 217 1A that deals with a non judicial officer who's taking a confession, he must take it before a magistrate. Why? Why the country ask a question as to why must it be taken before a magistrate? Because it says a peace officer who takes a statement from the suspect or the accused in terms of section 217, 1A, it must be reduced into writing before a magistrate. The question is why before a magistrate? The answer is because the magistrate knows all the elements of a particular case. Let me tell you where, how the law developed. 1929, there's a case called S versus Mullen. You know the case, Mr. Hello? 1929, S versus Mullen, where it's transplanted from English law, where it was said that a confession is an unequivocal, unequivocal admission of all the elements Correct. of a particular a, offense. That's it, yeah. Correct. And the law develops from there. Now, this witness, that's why, for instance, I'm sorry to say, she wrote everything this witness tells her, like even saying, he saw it me and said, shit, whatever. Her job is not to evaluate what the witness is saying to her. The job is to take down what the confessor or the deponent wants to say. That's all. But the That's why she's written for instance that uh, the, the parents of uh, some of these accused had a meeting. And some of the sisters of the accused wanted to, to report to the police. All those things. You can't leave them out. No, but I appreciate the fact that the court has mentioned the case of Malin. I know it. Yes. My Lord, at the end of the day, yeah. at the end of the day, after the, 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 this witness has taken a statement from accused number two. That's it, yeah. Yes. The elements for her to say unequivocally, that statement constitutes a confession. It's not for her to say that. That's what you I mean. understand. It's I'm, I'm getting to the technical part of that because the, the basis for getting into that technical part, I'm getting into the statement itself, the contents of the statement. May I just get into the statement so that I'll make logic at a later stage when I'm making submissions? For instance, ma'am, let's get into this one. <coughs> you talked about accused number one. Okay, you talk about <coughs> accused number two uh, uh, going to the room of Mosi. Then they later went to, to room 1B. Remember saying that? I noted down. Gibale Ogoti. And I go on. And I quote. We were in Mosi's room and we then proceeded to Sufisus and Ntokuzisi's room room number one b so what are your comments on that exchange between rata and ngome zulu comment down below yes i just want to <coughs> note that part that you said carlos and sufiso said i must go to the kitchen carlos and sufiso then ordered me to go to the kitchen correct yes so in that statement will you agree with me that <coughs> there was no direct communication between kelly kumalo and accused number two in that statement that you have read Kelly or <coughs> did not directly communicate with accused number two. There is no such information given to me to write down. Yes, this, this statement further con <coughs> proceed to say they when they entered. Sorry, let me just rephrase it because I just want to draw your attention from what you were taken to. Uh, you were told to take down. Just bear with me, my lord. Just okay, okay, okay. Yes. I'm trying to uh, organize a question that will be relevant for, for, for. Kelly Kumalo better hire Ngomezulu because Ngomezulu literally took her off the hook and gave her an alibi. Comment down below. Should Kelly Kumalo hire Ngomezulu for her yeah. defense? If you'll be able to ask this, answer this question, I just want to establish whether when you ask about clarifications that you've made or you sought when accused was giving you or the deponent was giving you the the statement <coughs> it come to your mind that he was coming he was confessing to a particular offense for instance did it come to your mind that that deponent was confessing to a robbery at that stage for clarification 
What I thought or didn't think at that particular moment is irrelevant uh, when it comes to the taking down of the statement. He had to be allowed to say whatever it is that he wanted to say so that it, 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 it's being written down without putting him or cornering him into a particular direction which he did not want to go into. You must also take into account that when a person is brought before you as a presiding officer, a magistrate, uh, that you know nothing about what it is that they want to tell you about. You must also take into account that I didn't know uh, the case or the facts or the merits of the case or what it is that uh, he wanted uh, to say. So you need to be allowed to say whatever it is that he wanted to say. My Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But no further questions. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section about our learned colleagues here, Ngomezulu and Madame Kranje. What are your thoughts on that interaction? Did Ngomezulu nail his point or did he lose traction?